Okay guys, so in this video, what we're talking about is the Snellen chart. So the Snellen chart is this guy, and this is what we'll use to measure distance vision. So with the Snellen chart, um, we have in decreasing sizes, various letters of the alphabet. And so starting at the top on line one, we have the letter E and then it goes all the way down. Now you'll notice on the side here that each line of letters has a number on the chart. So we can identify the lines to the patient so that they know which line they're supposed to read. I can say, read line five, please. And they know to shoot to this line. You'll also notice that all of the numbers are in the same size as line four here, which is one of the more common lines that patients are able to at least read during a vision distance screening test. Um, and so by being that size going all the way down, we can ensure that they're gonna know which line we're talking about. Now you'll also notice on the Snellen chart that we have a green line and a red line. This is used as a basic screening exam for color vision deficiency. With color vision deficiency, the two most common colors are red and green. So while I'm do performing the eye exam with my patient, I would make sure to ask, and what color is this here? And they'll say green, hopefully. And then which color is this here? Red, hopefully they'll say. Now, if they don't answer green or red to either one of those colors, then we may need to have a referral written out to an eye doctor so that we could diagnose further their color uh, vision deficiency which we would use by using the Ishiara chart. And I'll show you the Ishiara chart in just a few moments. So now continuing to look at the Snellen chart, you'll notice these numbers here on the left-hand side. So we see like line two is 2100, line three, 2070. All the way down here on line eight, I have 2020, which is supposed to be what's considered normal distance vision, 2020. This means that the patient was standing 20 feet away from the chart and could read what the average person is able to read at a distance of 20 feet. And so these numbers next to the lines on the left are going to be what we use to judge the patient's vision. So in this case, if a patient scored on line five and their vision was um, labeled as 2040, that would mean, again, our patient is standing 20 feet away from the eye chart and then that the average person would have been able to read this same line, line number five, at a distance of 40 feet away. So the average person could have been standing 20 feet further back than our patient and still have been able to read this line. So the top number always represents the distance they're standing away, which for the Snellen distance is 20 feet, and then the second number, again, represents what the average person with average distance vision would have been able to stand at and still read that same line. So now if we look down here at line nine, this one reads 2015. With 2015 vision, this is actually better than average vision. This means, again, that our patient was standing 20 feet away from the chart, but that somebody with average vision would have needed to stand 15 feet away from the chart. So they would have needed to be five feet closer in order to read the same line that our patient read. Now, if you give me just a moment, I'm gonna grab one more chart. So the Snellen chart, is not for everybody. There's a couple of other choices here of charts that could be used with patients. Now, the Snellen Big E chart, which is the one that I have here, is the more common alternative. When would I need to use this? I would need to use this for maybe preschool children that are not able to read their alphabet yet or don't know their alphabet yet, or maybe a non-English speaking individual would not be able to read the letters on the Snellen chart, the regular Snellen chart. So we might turn to the Snellen Big E chart. You'll notice that the Snellen Big E chart is really just made up of the letter E turned in various directions. So how this would work is you would ask the patient to tell you which way it's facing. The easiest way to do this and make sure that your patient understands what you're trying to get them to do is to compare this to a table. So you can say that this is a table with legs on it, which when turned this way does look like that. And so then you can ask them which way are the legs of the table facing. 
I would highly suggest, especially when doing this with children, that you play a game of this first. Draw this letter E in this same box format on an index card. Show this index card to the child, ask them which way the E is facing, and continue turning it in various directions and asking. You can stop playing the game once you're sure that the child understands the directions and what they're supposed to do so we can get accurate results of their distance vision exam. So once they understand the game, then you can move on to the actual chart to measure their vision. Now, another alternative for those that um, don't know their alphabet yet, our children, or for non-English speaking patients, um, there is also one with shapes or symbols on it. Now, this one is not used as often as the Snell and Bake E chart, and that is because of the variance of the symbols. And not everybody calls these symbols what you would think, and so there's not as much accuracy involved. You know, however, if they looked at this first picture and they said boat instead of ship, I think that that would be acceptable. They understand what symbol that is, but it's not as accurate as maybe the Snell and Bake E or the regular Snell and chart. Now, the last item that I want to show you for vision testing is the Ishiara book. Now, the Ishiara book is used to test a patient for color deficiencies. The Ishiara book is made up of several pages and there's two types of books. So in this first book, you can see that it's colored dots with a contrasting color of dots. And inside you can see that we have made a square inside of here with the orange dots. So what this book is supposed to represent is two different contrasting colors. And then you would ask the patient what shape is seen in these images. Um, for maybe a small child, you could also have them use a cotton swab, not their finger, but a cotton swab and trace the outline. You don't want them to use their fingers because the oils from their fingers could degenerate the colors and make this less accurate for other patients. So you wanna be careful not to ever touch these pages of the colors with your fingers. Now in this book, again, it's shapes. And so this might be used for a child that doesn't know their numbers yet. There is also another Ishiara book that's more commonly used with adults and older children in which it is all numbers inside of here that they would say. So they could say, I see the number 72. Now, the first page of every Ishiara book is meant to be read by all patients, even those with color deficiencies, correctly. The reason that it's meant to always be read correctly, even by those with a color deficiency, is to ensure that they understand how this is supposed to work. We wanna make sure that they understand the directions and what we're actually testing. So the first page is just simply used as instruction. Now, if they say that they can't get the same shape that you're seeing or the same number that you're seeing, most likely it's because they don't understand the instructions that we've given them. So we wanna re-explain and then re-ask them. And again, I just wanna show you the cover. This was the Ishiara book. All right, guys, thank you.